So here's what we're working on today. Um, before I get ready to start pulling all the trans and all the good stuff out of it, I did go ahead and buy me some new body mounts. Um, I just went with Synergy uh, suspension. I've used them on some other stuff on the truck. Really like their stuff. Uh, these body mounts are, I think, high quality. Really not hard to change either. I'll uh, try to get a shot of that uh, real quick. But the old body mounts weren't in horrible shape, but uh, they definitely weren't the greatest. Really, just before I, uh, since I had it tore down, you know, the body mounts really aren't that much uh, compared to everything else I'm doing. So I decided to change it. I mean, they had some nasty stuff in here from when I used this thing as a straight up work truck. Some of the threads are kind of jacked up, but overall they're not in too bad a shape. So here's the transmission plug. I just got through draining transmission fluid and uh, can definitely tell it has got some clutch material on this magnet. I mean, that's, I don't know how well the camera's gonna pick up on it, but it's definitely some clutch material. I mean, uh, four wheel drive, uh, which is third gear, and the 48s are is definitely what's slipping in this one uh it's pretty nasty though so these transmission lines have just been kicking my butt here the past little bit um i am pulling all the stock transmission lines out going to run all new uh negative eight an lines so there's a heat exchanger in there that i'm uh it's pretty much kicking my butt right now that's what i'm working on i got the uh transmission lines off now i just need to pull the coolant lines uh, you got another coolant line that runs down there on the block. I know you probably can't see nothing, but uh, that's uh, what I'm working on next. And then I got my two lines disconnected up here, going to the front cooler, which will uh, no longer be used. I uh, want to get to go ahead and get the heat exchanger out first. So here's the transmission uh, heat exchanger that everybody talks about. Uh, basically, you get transmission fluid coming in one, going out the other, and you get uh, cool it coming in it comes around the back of the block over to the heat exchanger and then comes out and then goes back in the the driver's side of the block um, this definitely is not the easiest thing to pull um, what I ended up doing was just waiting until basically I got everything out pulled the adapter plate uh, left the starter in just kind of put a jack under it and held it and then I got to the bottom bolt because this thing is bolted to a plate uh, the plates I've already put up but uh this definitely is not the easiest to get to with everything in place, but I'm getting rid of it. No need for it uh, with my new cooling. Definitely don't want this taking out the new trans. I feel like I've been lucky enough so far. Uh, never had a problem. This thing was manufactured 1125 of 02, and it has never been changed. So definitely not taking any more chances on it. All right, so here's how I'm leaving it uh, after tonight. Trans is pulled, adapter plates back in. I still got to torque it down. Um, like I said, you can't really, I'm not even fixing to try to get up in there to see, but the heat exchanger is gone. Um, I pulled the stupid little nasty sound deadener material out from under here. Looks a heck of a lot better. I am putting a Suncoast uh, transmission blanket on my new trans. So here's a quick comparison. Uh, this is the flex plate uh, that came out of the truck. Uh, it is a billet Suncoast. I've been running Suncoast for forever. That's pretty much all I've ever ran. I've had really good luck with it, but I just wanted to go over a couple of differences between this flex plate, the one I was running, and my new one. Uh, this is an older one that has the uh, the gears for the starter uh, is welded to it. As you can see, I mean, I seriously doubt I'd have any problems with this. Um, this one has definitely passed its SFI certification, though it's been in the truck since uh, the manufacturer date on it is three of fourteen. Um, I did run the stock uh, flex plate uh, there for a while. The new one uh, is a one-piece full billet flex plate. All solid, one-piece, no welds anywhere. It's uh, manufactured date on it's 9 of 16. Uh, this actually flex plate come out of my good buddy uh, Ben Shaddy's uh, UCC truck. So if it held up to him, I'm pretty sure it'll hold up to me. Uh, it's getting ratcheted down with some ARP bolts Trans as well. It came out of the truck, input shaft. Really doesn't look bad at all. I mean, nothing's twisted. Uh, 
I would say that's a success for what you're pushing through. That is just a standard, uh, normal stock size billet shaft. Um, here's Transit was still running the, the throttle valve and everything. I mean, it was set up. Uh, definitely, it was a modified valve body. Uh, this Trans was built back in uh, two th early 2000, January of 2010 by Relentless Diesel. And uh, I can't thank those guys enough. They've helped me out a long a long time and uh, got me up and running. Only thing I ever broke on this trans was I broke the Dodge stock output and that's when we put the billet flex plate and uh, billet output shaft. But it's got the, the relocated vent. Um, that's a stock size uh, output shaft as well. I can uh, show you real quick uh, the new new input for the for the trans case is on my other trans sitting next to it, but uh, it's quite a bit bigger. I mean, here it kind of rattling around. It's quite a bit bigger for the oversized shaft. So I'm leaving this trans wrapped just because uh, I'm not going to be putting it in like now. But uh, just a little quick overview of this one. It's all billet shafts. It's got the uh, bigger input shaft, which I believe is the 29 spline input shaft the converters uh sitting over there in the box still saying with everything suncoast all suncoast parts in this one too uh this one is uh, manual valve body constant pressure um there's my two an fittings I already put them in there getting ready uh right now it's just sitting on the stock pan just so i can get it in there and then i'll swap it out because i actually don't have my other pan back yet from powder coat um and then go back here we can go back to the uh output shaft of this trans like i said this is the uh, the fat output shaft which like i said is a lot bigger than that standard one and this is the uh input shaft for the tr uh, transfer case that i've got to open up and swap out should be a pretty damn solid setup this is from my boys at over at Dunright diesel uh i can't thank them enough for for what they've done and helped with they're freaking amazing too but uh sun coast for the win you know the converter out of this stock one sure doesn't look bad uh, i thought it was gonna have some you know show some heat marks just because it's been in there for so dad young long but it really looks pretty good i'll walk outside and uh and show that to you real quick oh, it's dark i've got the flashlight on this converter but uh it really just doesn't show any heat marks uh I'm actually quite impressed. I have to look up and see exactly how many miles I have on this on this Suncoast converter. But uh, I, I definitely know it has not been rechecked, restalled, anything since uh, January of 2010. Um, so it has been a champ, and it was still going strong. It was every now and then it had some some slight maybe shutter. Um, but it, it definitely was going strong even when it burnt uh, forward drive up still made quite a bit of horsepower with this one. I guess a little more on uh, This trans here um, Like I said, it was a relentless build those guys are very good friends of mine uh, Definitely helped me a lot this one. I'm pretty sure uh, The first thing that happened to it. It slipped the forward gears, which is third gear um, it lost reverse gain reverse back so I'm pretty sure it got a little hot um, then finally actually ran it at the track a few more times after it lost reverse the first time and gained it back everything worked perfectly fine couldn't tell anything about it that was on the dyno when it lost reverse or after the dyno session uh, ran it at the track uh, for a few more months and was out making some test passes and was just really trying to hone in on the launch cut some pretty darn good 60 foot for what this thing is and about the fourth pass of doing that uh, it finally just completely slipped them spit some fluid back out underneath the hood um, still grabbed and went but uh, then it lost reverse neutral everything was pretty much forward and it finally uh, you know I limped it on the trailer got it home uh, checked a few things out and uh, made the decision on this other trans and then kept this in there i'm just now getting to fixing it but uh in the meantime i drive it just to keep the batteries charged or, or try to and i'm pretty sure it got second gear banned as well 
Uh, we'll know some more when I open it up. This one is going to go back to my boys over at Dunright Diesel eventually too. Uh, those guys just are killing it in the game and, and they definitely help me out a lot more than they need to. Just a bunch of, bunch of great guys up there. Just wanted to show a quick little view of how the shifter turned out. I got some stuff back from Powder Coat. Really like my blue. One switch mount, other switch mount. Really turned out, really turned out extremely, extremely nice. Probably won't be able to tell, but uh, I really like the way it turned out. Can't wait to get the other As plate. You can back. see we've been working under here too. I had to pull the coolant line. goes right on the back side coming out goes to the heater core uh, it's the one that runs up underneath the manifold back to the heater core and it runs actually around back to the heat exchanger I went ahead and pulled that and will make me a new line um, out of my braided stainless going from there to the heat exchanger following close to the same route as the stock line um, as you can see I am Pulling the second battery. I'm not going to run it anymore. I'm just going to go down to one battery. Uh, so I'm going to get a new wire made to go from the alternator to the driver battery. And it's pretty much a wreck under the hood. Uh, but it will get back together eventually. Got a lot of wiring to uh, do this coming up week in the afternoons. 